Hi guys, Jonathan Ferguson here with a real beast for you this time. Let me just get it up to the camera. We'll have, we'll have the usual high-res photo or photos for you via the collections website. But I'd like to give you a good view on camera so you know what I'm talking about. And it's a bit more interesting than looking at my face. So you might be able to see 0.577CF marked on the side. We've got some London private proof marks as well. Various um, item, uh, mechanisms are in evidence here. And I will try to show you the maker's address on the barrel. Charles Lancaster, brackets patent, because this does pertain to a patent. And it's 151 New Bond Street, London. So, a British maker, name of Charles Lancaster, except this comes out around about 1885, or at least one, uh, most flavours of it do, um, different calibres, and two main different designs. You're looking at them both here. So this is, this is the standard in 380 revolver, 476 revolver, and 455, famous for the Webley revolver, of course. Um, this one has the double trigger, which allows you to fire it with a bit more accuracy, but still quickly, because the trigger on this beast is terrible. And then the other design is the one we're focusing on today, scaled up for the absolutely enormous 577 cartridge. So, now, I say it's enormous, the bullet is enormous. It's about 450 grains. 577 of an inch in diameter, big heavy bullet, but it's very slow. I would estimate no more than 700 feet per second in, in old money velocity from this because, and I'm waving this at you for two reasons. Firstly, you can see the step in the chamber there where the cartridge case head would sit. The bullet would protrude beyond that, but it's actually a very short cartridge, only about 20 millimeters case length. So the powder capacity is very low, which means low velocity. And then the other reason I'm waving it at you is what looks like a smooth bore, you can see my face through, is not, well it is, but it's also spiral. And it's an oval shape, very slight oval shape that describes a spiral. It's just another way of doing rifling. Instead of spiral grooves, you just change the shape of the bore. Um, a Glock pistol works in a not dissimilar way with a polygonal, uh, very smooth form of rifling. This is just a, a take on the same idea, uh, but much older. So Charles Lancaster was the chap who actually invented the oval bore. Um, but Charles Lancaster, who owned the company in the 1870s, died in 1878. His apprentice, Henry Thorne, took over, bought the company out. And he's the inventor of this, the Lancaster pistol, which you may well have come across. So we're going to focus on the two barrel 577. And as you've seen, it's a, a lever on the side. Press the lever, that lifts up the two uh, top bite lock locking mechanism, lock, uh, hook locking hooks, and allows the barrel to drop. You then get a revolver style extractor, pops out your empty cases and then pops back in. You drop in your two new 577 cartridges, close it up and carry on firing. Now, these were set up as a, as a rival concept to the revolver, which by then was really very good and quite reliable. But there's a holdout group of uh, especially military officers who don't trust them. They think they're unreliable. They think they're inaccurate. They think they're low powered. And this was marketed as the solution to that. But it does still have a revolver cylinder in it. It just doesn't have any chambers. The chambers are in the barrels, old fashioned style. Um, the cylinder is actually a revolving striker. So that is hidden in the mechanism, safer from dirt and bits of sand and things, but it revolves in here just like a double action revolver or self-cocking revolver would by pulling through on the trigger. It rotates the striker to the next barrel, in this case only two, pulls it back and then releases it to fire the primer of the cartridge. So it's, it is a revolver really, it's just a, fully concealed revolver cylinder that doesn't have any cartridges in it. It's not really a revolver, but it does share some of the same operating principles. 
which is ironic because the Lancaster company were marketing these as reliable, easier to clean, uh, less prone to wear in the rifling, rivals to the revolver. And actually, if I briefly show you the revolver of, of 1880 through this period, and if you know anything about this, or even just looking at it, you can probably tell the Enfield Mark I and Mark II revolvers were not great. Um, you had to, although you could empty them easily enough, they retained live cartridges, and you had to load the live cartridges one at a time using a loading gate. Not a great design. Um, but it gave you six shots. Whereas, of course, this beast, you get two massive shots. Quick word on ammunition. This is the 577 Snyder cartridge for the Snyder rifle. Uh, this is an inert version. This does not fit. Let me just grab one that I won't damage and quickly demonstrate. So this is only a uh, 20mm long case. It's almost a third the length of this much longer, higher capacity case. And it will just sit about there. It won't go any further than that. Uh, well, it will, but that's the next down bit of the case going into where the bullet should sit. It shouldn't, wouldn't work that way. So in reality, this is a very short case, about that long that this takes. We have live, live examples of this. I can't show live ammo with a live gun, unfortunately. Well, fortunately, but also unfortunately. So it's actually a really short cartridge. So yeah, only between six and 700 feet per second, roughly what the Webley revolver did in terms of velocity, but with a much bigger, heavier bullet. So that was thought to physically knock men down. It doesn't do that, can't do that. Physics says no. Um, but it would crush a much bigger hole through you and promote bleeding, the chance of hitting something vital much bigger. So a real man stopper at cl very close range. As distinct from the true powder pistol, this is a 577 one, which takes, now admittedly, this still doesn't take the rifle Snyder cartridge, but it takes a case length about twice as long. So you've got much greater velocity. And this is a, a true howder pistol for stopping tigers and similar um, large scary animals from climbing up your elephant and killing you. This is for the battlefield or the target range. I think a lot of these would have ended up as range toys. Um, the version with the double trigger where you hold the lower bit back like a tranter and pull the much lighter trigger up here would have been popular for target shooting. Yeah, a, a really interesting thing nonetheless and just really impressive. It just kind of um, instantly calls to mind British officers on horseback blazing away and that's um, the main account that, that tends to be referenced for these. But the accounts of, of actual use are really quite slim. Um, we have quotes about how superior single shot or double shot pistols might be to revolvers, but not much in the way of solid actual combat experience. The story that tends to get uh, referenced is that of Colonel Fred Burnaby uh, of the Blues, who was armed with a full barrel Lancaster, so definitely not a powder type cartridge, not, not a 577 cartridge. Um, would have been 476 most likely, or, or sorry, uh, 455 perhaps. Um, and that's not really a great advertisement for the Lancaster because he was cut down, stabbed and speared in the throat um, by Arab warriors at Abu Clay in 1885. Uh, his pistol would have been uh, brand new, if indeed he did have one. one. One of his fellow officers said he saw him with one. That's the only reference we have. There is an interesting quote in terms of the stopping power, as I say, uh, Lord Kitchener, who in 1886 said, again about Abu Clay, a pistol carries a heavier bullet and efficaciously stops your man. Lieutenant Lord Airely told me he owed his life at Abu Clay to my having given him one of my pistols with which he shot the man who wounded him. He dropped him dead. But Kitchener, uh, famous of course as a First World War general later on, was not talking about a Lancaster. He was talking about a Howder pistol, as he, as he would have taken on a big game hunt. 
if he's talking about a massive heavy uh, 577 or 20 bore or 12 bore even firing solid slug something that would go through the skull of a, of a lion or something and would certainly stop a man um, so this whole debate about revolvers versus pistols is, is fascinating historically. Um, it's one that goes on today in a different way. And the debate about stopping power has never gone away. That's still going on. 9mm versus 45. And in this case, it's um, 476 versus 577, which actually would make a significant difference in terms of um, terminal ballistics, as we would call it these days. So that's that for that one. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we are opening next week, uh, so please, if you are anywhere near us, do make the trip to come and see us again. We'd love to see you at the, the museum. We do have a Lancaster pistol on display, you'd be pleased to hear, if you've been wanting to get your eyeballs on one. Um, there are links in the description, as always, if you'd like to donate to us or become a member. And do go and check out our collaboration that's ongoing with the GameSpot video game website over on their channel. Otherwise, I will see you again next week for another exciting instalment of historic firearms from the stores. Thanks very much, guys.